Hello, my name is Steve Hartman, and I have the honor and privilege of working for Airstream Motorhomes. And we're uh, introducing a brand new product offering that we've worked on for over three years in product development. It's a best in class Airstream adventure van, and it's called the Interstate 24X model. And it's now available at Airstream of South Florida. And you're gonna see uh, four different presentations from the sales guys on the inside and the outside of again, the all new Airstream 24X model. They have a demo that's available for you to look at, for you to test drive. If you're interested, if this is something that, that fits your lifestyle, you can uh, secure a, a future order pro production slot in uh, the fall time or winter time of this year. So sit back and enjoy the hard work, something we've worked on for three years. Hopefully you'll, uh, you'll like what we did. Thank you. guys doing this is Todd Utzman here at Airstream of South Florida division of North Trail RV right here in the mostly sunny Fort Myers Florida uh, here to talk about some of the unique things with this brand new Airstream Interstate X off-road class B motor coach it is pretty awesome and I'm gonna cover just a few of the features for you today hopefully it gets you inspired excited enough to want to come in and take a look at it and and, and see some of the great things yourself in person. One of the things I'm excited about is the kind of tires they put on it. They really are off-road tires. These are Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires, Kevlar sidewall, so they're very aggressive and very durable. I've had these on a truck myself a few times and they're actually a very good tire. They work well on the road, but they work excellent off the road to give you that bite and traction you need when you're running the two tracks or the fire trails out west, wherever you may find yourself with your new Interstate X off-road RV. Got great running boards over the whole thing. Um, that uh, They got great traction holes built in them, which is awesome. They're super sturdy and yet they're very porous, easy to rinse the mud off and get them cleaned back up. We'll work our way around to the uh, other side. They did do this great matte finish. Some of the other guys might have already told you, some of my coworkers here at Airstream, about these nice matte finishes, but they're super durable and resistant to nicks and scratches and that kind of thing that you might find yourself running into off-road, out in the woods or the field or on that two-track. Um, another unique feature is the fact that you can set a table up outside. You've had a great day of fishing, you, now you want to sit back and just relax and watch that sunset, have your tea, coffee, drink, cocktail, whatever your choice is, put your awning out. Uh, if you're sitting with company around the fire and you need a little lighted workstation area with that table, you can have it because we've got great lighting also on these Interstate X's. Uh, all the way around, they've got great LED light packs on all four corners of this unit, plus a great big light bar on the front if you're doing a little off-roading and it's nighttime to get you back into your camp or your place of exploration. So I'm gonna start with the power plant because that's what we're all concerned about. So I'm gonna reach in here and I'm gonna release the hood. It's right about here on the inside of the chassis. Perfect. So, 188 horsepower, 325 pounds of foot torque. This is more torque than you're ever gonna need. You can haul 5,000 pounds behind you with this vehicle. It's a dually, so you have plenty of traction, and we'll touch on this over and over again, but I wanted you to see your brake fluid. Uh, this right here is where you jump your battery because the battery's on the inside your washer fluid uh, your air uh, air breather is here you also have uh, all of your engine components are down here it is a six cylinder your oil add uh, additional fluid for your radiator 
it's really simple and straightforward. So with the new vehicle, they have your new lights here, your fog lights here. Now this is where it differs from the other interstates because this is an X. Uh, these are actually Mercedes rims uh, and they actually have like line X on them. This is incredible stuff. This is virtually indestructible. It's really nice looking and I have the same thing on mine. It's a powder coat. One of the things that you're gonna love about this is you have blind spot monitor right here. This is gonna be yellow for cautionary. It's gonna be red uh, to let you know somebody's there. If you start to go over, it's gonna flash red. It's gonna go, don't go over. <laughs> it's not gonna say it. And then right here, you've got, uh, this is an Airstream ad. This is your side, uh, your side mirrors. Uh, it's, a, it's like a side camera, like a rear view camera, but it's on the side, so it shows you the side. So you can always see that kind of stuff. It's important. You have your exhaust coming out here. Now this is a dually and it's four wheel drive. I'll tell you, the four wheel drive on this gives you so much advantage if uh, the things that they do off road in these things are incredible. It gives you four inches of additional height off the road which is amazing if you just have a driveway that's hard to get into. Four-wheel drive is going to make it easy to get into. If you want to get off in the boonies, this will do it. Uh, and it, you can see all these on Mercedes' YouTube channel where they take these off-road where just one wheel is touching. The other three are suspended. Uh, and the one wheel will pull it forward until the next wheels can catch it. It's amazing. This is that 5,000 pound hitch receiver. Easy to see, it's not hidden behind a bunch of plastic, so you're not gonna mark up your bumper. It's right there. And then you've got your seven uh, prong outlet right there. Your doors open up 180 degrees. And we've got about 19 f uh, feet from front to back, so you can put lots of stuff in here. Don't let your wife know or your husband know that you're using it to go to the lumber yard. Some of the things I'd like to point out, your diesel's right here. So you put the diesel in there, and when the diesel's full, when it shuts off, it's done. What you'll want to do, you'll know, when that's open, you'll look in there, it clicks off, you'll see the suds. It's full. It knows when to quit uh, at the pump. So, so we talked about the blind spot monitor. Well, this also has lane tracking, and that's a Mercedes feature. It's up underneath. It's essentially cameras looking down and reading the lines on the road. So if you get out of your lane, you're getting tired, you've been driving for 10 hours, uh, it's going to let you know that you crossed the lane people go, well, wow, George, it's really tall. Uh, what about wind? Well, uh, that lane uh, is going to let you know if the wind has pushed you over, but you're not going to have to worry about that anymore because this has cross wind. In other words, when a big wind hits this side, your brakes are going to adjust you so that you stay straight so that you don't do all that pulling to the right and to the left. Now, if it reads that you're gonna hit something, it's gonna break for you. It's gonna go, well, you're gonna have an accident. We're gonna put on the brakes here. Really important stuff. We're business partners with Mercedes-Benz and nobody else is. So we have front and rear axles, front and rear springs, front and rear rotors, front and rear, uh, brakes. We have stabilizers, front and rear. All of these things are extra heavy duty. They're the heaviest duty that Mercedes builds and only Airstream is allowed to buy them. So what makes this an extended version? Well, there's a 170 inches uh, between these two wheels. So they, that's why it's called a 170. 
For example, the 19 footer is a 144. And so there's only 140 inches between the wheels. And so it's shorter. It's 19 feet versus 24 feet and a half inches. That's 24 feet and a half inches. This is standard. Uh, is we have an air ride. Don't let anybody tell you that air ride isn't absolutely essential because air ride is priceless. Look, it, it keeps your dentures from chattering, your teeth from chattering, your dishes from chattering. It keeps the value of your vehicle longer uh, because everything isn't rubbing and shaking. It's, it's riding on air. In fact, speaking of air, it's entirely automatic. It adjusts 45, it checks 45 times a minute, it checks. But you can override it. So say you were someplace and you wanted to let your friend who just broke his hip on his Harley into your vehicle and you wanted to lower it uh, three or four inches, this is right inside the vehicle behind the driver's seat and you can lower this vehicle so it's easier for someone to get in. Or say you wanted to raise it up for some reason so you could uh, get under it, uh, be a little higher off the ground. You're in a place where uh, you've got some big huge boulders. Well, you can, that you're going over, you can raise this up three or four inches. Okay, let's talk about some of the uh, tanks we have on this trailer. You have a fresh water tank, 23 gallons of fresh water in this coach. You have a gray tank. Your gray tank is your shower water, your sink water. That is 24 gallons. And then you have your black tank, which is your toilet water. That's 11 gallons. So we've got 23 gallons of fresh water, 24 gallons of gray tank, and then we've got uh, 11 gallons of black water, okay? This coach for your dumping station has a macerator. Macerator has a power pump and uh, knife valves that are gonna help churn up your waste, okay? So it's a power macerator, makes it a lot cleaner process than it does with a regular dump station. Right here, you've got, remember you've got 300 on the coach, four, 100 on the chassis for a total of 400. On each side of the coach, roadside and curbside, you have these solar plug-ins. So you can put an additional 100 in each one of these. Same location on the other side. So you, got, you could have a total of 600 watts of solar on this coach, okay? This is the new smart plug. A lot easier than the old plugs. The old ones you had to put in, turn, and then wind it around. These you just pl pull these tabs in and pull out. That's the new smart plug. Okay, you also have the 2.5 kilowatt generator that has auto start and it's real quiet. It's not like some generators out there in some of the bigger rigs. So you've got a 2.5 kilowatt uh, auto start generator with a real quiet sound in that. Okay folks, now we're going to cover some stuff on the inside of this baby, the uh, Interstate 24X. Um, first off, we're going to go start with the cooktop. You have a two burner LP cooktop, nice and convenient with a uh, cover up for when you're not using it. Obviously, don't put that down until you're ready to, uh, it's cooled down some, okay? Then we've got your sink over here, pretty simple. Got a uh, sink cover and this side can be used as a cutting board. Um, you have a five cubic foot refrigerator here. It opens up right here. You also have a travel lock, which is real convenient so that thing doesn't fly open when you're traveling. You have a 1.6 cubic foot uh, slide out freezer. It's like a drawer and that has the aluminum uh, inserts as well. And again, this has a travel lock on it that's gonna help for when you're traveling so that this thing doesn't fly open. You have a 13,000 BTU AC unit here. It's a little bit recessed from other models that we have, so it doesn't hang down quite as far. Your roof space in here is six foot two. Your width is five foot 10 on the inside. You also have a 16,000 BTU Timmerline uh, furnace in this baby. You also, the water heater is also Timmerline. And that's a 60,000 BTUs of, uh, of uh, hot water there. This is a tankless hot water heater, so it's limitless. So it, you know, it's not like the old deal where you had six gallons and you would uh, take a shower, you would get wet, soap up, rinse off. Your showers are now as long as you want them to be because you have unlimited hot water, okay? 
Uh, so we've covered the hot water, we've covered your furnace, some of these uh, items inside. A couple things I want to cover before we go outside. You have 300, 400 watts of solar in this coach. 300 are on the uh, coach itself, 100 watts of solar on the chassis, okay? When we get outside, I'll show you two more plug-ins on this coach, so you can get up to 600 watts of solar power. Uh, you've got your uh, CO detectors down here, CO detector, and a smoke detector right up here in the front of the cabin. Right behind this wall here is a smoke detector. Uh, those are all for your convenience and carbon, carbon monoxide detector as well. Hey guys, Bruce Tall Guy Miller here at Airstream of South Florida in sunny Fort Myers. We're going to take a look at the control panels here in the all new Airstream Interstate X, the off road model. So, right here we've got our power control system. This is the unit that recognizes what power we have. Right now it's showing 30 amp shore power, and that is because we're plugged in. If we were plugged into 20 amp, it would recognize that. And it watches that so that it knows what it can power and what it cannot, what it might need to shed power to, in other words, uh, take power away from uh, in order to run something else if it needs to. You can also set those settings so that if you need to shed power for a certain thing and run on 20 amp versus 30, that kind of thing, you can do that. Down here, we have the power inverter. It's an all new model. Uh, it's, it's a Xantrex 2000. Airstream has always used a 1000 watt inverter. This is a 2000. So it gives you a little more capability. You're able not only to uh, run the things you've always run with a with 1000 watt inverter, like the television and things like that, some of the outlets, but with 2000 watts, you can even run the microwave. Basically, the only thing in here you cannot run with this would be the air conditioner. And right now we're on shore power, it's automatic, it's showing that it's bypassed, so I can't scroll through the settings and so on. But it's automatic in that if I unplug from shore power, it will automatically power up those outlets and the microwave and so on with the inverter. I don't have to turn it on. Uh, when I go back and plug into the shore power again, it realizes that, it switches back, uh, basically shuts off the inverter. Still lets me monitor that I've got 14.4 volts there and that kind of thing, and it tells me that it is bypassed. If it were on the inverter, uh, instead of shore power, I would also be able to scroll through, through some readings here to see what my uh, voltage is on my battery, see what my amperage output is, and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> here we have our C level, which tells us it's got a little bit redundant. There's our battery voltage. It's showing 14.2 because we're plugged in. If we were not plugged in, we would be down in the in high 12s to 13s. Uh, here we've got fresh water level. It's showing 4%. Actually, it's, uh, it's probably got a little bit in it from testing, but, but it's empty. Gray, zero, black, zero, and propane levels right now are 44%. We've not topped them off because this unit just came in. Here is our solar readout for our Victron solar re uh, uh, controller. And right now it's showing me, it's very overcast out. It's showing me I have one watt. I can scroll through some settings here. I've got 24.1 volts. I've got uh, 0.24 watt hours. Uh, I've got uh, zero amps at the moment uh, and 14.3 volts again. So this allows me to monitor what the solar is currently doing. These are, this is the switch for the tank heaters. So if you're out in cold weather, you can turn those tank heaters on. It'll keep your fresh, your gray, and your black water tanks all heated so they cannot freeze up. Uh, when it's going to be cold, you simply turn it on and don't worry about it. You don't have to turn it on and off. It does have a thermostat built in, so it will go off uh, at about 44 degrees. It'll come on at about 42, and I actually said that backwards. It's going to come on around 42, and then as it gets colder, it'll protect your tanks. As it warms up, gets to about 44, it will shut off. This red light will stay on just as a reminder to you that you do have that system turned on. Here in Florida, you'll probably never turn that on. So this is our new energy command for the new Cummins uh, Onan uh, generator in this unit. So we have a lot of controls here. This is the start stop. These things are amazingly quiet. Uh, they lowered the uh, dB output on these generators by over 10 dB. Uh, and if you read up about dB and, and the measurement of sound, that is half the volume. So they're very quiet. In fact, first time I started one of these up, 
I thought I, it wasn't starting uh, and it was actually running. So I can turn it on manually. I can set up auto gen start. I can set auto gen start to run uh, based on time, start time, stop time, all those kinds of things. Here we have a uh, battery heater because this has lithium batteries. Uh, lithium batteries function very well in hot, cold weather. Uh, they'll, they'll give you plenty of power even in sub, uh, you know, freezing temperatures. However, lithium batteries don't like to charge in freezing temperatures. So this has the Battleborn lithium batteries in it. Those have from uh, in, within the battery a, a heater. And in cold weather, you can simply turn this on. It comes with the key, you turn it on. And again, it has a thermostat. You don't have to worry about it but that battery warmer or battery heater within that battery will kick on at low temperatures which allows the lithium battery to charge and those heaters literally draw milliamps they don't take much power at all but that is the way that we make lithium batteries work uh, in cold temperatures lithium batteries are awesome because you can run them clear down to zero charge them back up uh, unlike the old AGMs, that kind of thing. So you get a lot more usable watt hours or amp hours, excuse me, out of a, ba out of a lithium battery. And this is simply a switch uh, for the Airstream Connect Wi-Fi if you choose to have it installed. It is pre-wired, it is not in here yet, but if it uh, installs, the modem goes right here, the switch to turn it off is right there. In this coach, you've got a 200 watt Xantrax uh, conver inverter. And what that does is it's going to protect your, your, uh, your, your uh, electrical things inside here. It's the highest level of electrical protection you can have in this coach for your UL. And that's the Xantrac 2000 watts pure sign inverter. So guys, this is Bruce Tall Guy Miller again. Here we are in the actual cab of the Airstream Interstate X. And uh, you know what, Mercedes has really outdone themselves with this new chassis and the features that we've got here. I mean, we've just got all kinds of things here that, are, are, that, are, that Mercedes gets the credit for. And a few things we'll talk about right here that, uh, that Airstream does as well. So for one thing, for many, many, many years, we had asked Mercedes for power seats. No power seats, uh, they would not do it. Uh, they finally acquiesced. I think the uh, RV industry as a whole became big enough that the, uh, they realized they needed to, to, to be respond, responsive to the request and we now have 12-way power seats, they're awesome. So we've got the controls here on the door. I can go up and down, back and forth, recline, tilt, that kind of thing. Uh, I actually have lumbar supports on the side by the door, uh, lumbar adjustments, and not only can I move the lumbar in and out, I can move it up and down, which is very important for somebody like me uh, with a little longer torso because uh, a typical lumbar hits me too low, doesn't do me any good. So I can put it where I need it and I can adjust it the way I need it to be. Uh, Mercedes has got grab handles everywhere. We've got one here. And I apologize. Uh, we're going to talk about the Mercedes Benz user experience here in a moment. but. Uh, that is what's going on here. And I'm gonna power this system off for the moment because every time she hears the word Mercedes, she wants to know what she can do for me. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so Mercedes has got grab handle sorts everywhere. We got a nice one here. We got a nice one here. Those are both very helpful getting in and out of the cab. We've got uh, a tilt and extend steering wheel. Uh, we're gonna talk about controls on the wheel here in a bit too because they relate to the instrument cluster and the Mercedes Benz user experience. We've got a storage platform up here. Uh, of course, our nice, uh, our nice visor with our mirror. Uh, this unit, <laughs> there are five cup holders for each person up here. So there's 10 total. We've got one, two, three, four, and there's one in the door, there's five. So you can, uh, you can have plenty of liquids and won't have to stop for any drinks for a while. Now that may cause you to have to stop for another reason, but no, not for drinks. <laughs> Down here, we have our climate control, uh, temperature up, down, fan, automatic. It's automatic climate control. I can set it on auto, it'll adjust however I need it to. I can adjust the airflow up, down, that kind of thing. Uh, I've got a rear defroster here. I've got a front defroster. Um, I've got recirculation of air. And right here in the middle, we actually have our hazard button. Uh, down here, uh, we have a button for the power sliding door on this and and you'll hear the other guys talk about that power sliding door It's an amazing feature. There are actually four ways to open and close that door. This is one of them There's also 
a button right here on the key fob. So you can use that, you can use this. There's a button on the door pillar and you can also use the handle, just pull it and release and it will open and close. Okay, down here we have some controls related to our four wheel drive, turn it on and off. We've got our uh, hill control or uh, hill hold, I guess if you will. We've got front LED lights, uh, rear LED lights. We've got a travel warning here um, that'll light up if I, if I put it in gear and I've got the door open or the step out or the awning's not closed or something, that'll, that'll light up and start beeping at us, that kind of thing. Okay, so up front here now and the drivers on the steering wheel, we got all kinds of neat controls. Again, this is all Mercedes, but it's awesome. So I've got all these controls over here that relate to the instrument cluster. And I have all these controls here that relate to the Mercedes-Benz user experience. And I can run them all without taking my hand off of the steering wheel. I even have a little touch pad. So I'm gonna hit this home button and we'll see the center screen go back to home. And it's showing me uh, 88 miles. This coach is brand new, hasn't been anywhere. That's just from the test drive at the factory. But uh, if I hit the home button again, it's gonna give me some choices like I've got, and I can use this little thumb pad right here. It's like a track pad on a computer. And I can scroll across. I've got service, I've got drive assist, trip, navigation, radio, media, phone, and settings. And as I go across here, let's go back to service. I can press that little touch pad and it brings up that menu. And there's zero messages, uh, but I can also scroll down and being a diesel, this uses diesel exhaust fluid, I can press that and say, looky there, I've got a full tank of diesel exhaust fluid. So I can check my diesel exhaust fluid anytime. Uh, there's even a, a setting where I can make that screen show up automatically. Uh, if I wanna get out of that, I simply hit the back button here by the home and it'll go back. Now I can come down here to assist plus, tells me I need to service it in 375 days. Of course, that's unless the mileage requires service prior to that. And then down here, I go down one more, I can check the engine oil level. We can see it's right at max. And I'll hit the back button again. I can go down and I can check the diesel particulate filter. And it's a 32%. And it's probably gonna stay right around there. It'll go up and down a little bit, but it'll do a, a regen and it'll clean itself out. That's just a way for you to monitor it. Now, I'm gonna hit escape two times and go back to the main screen. I can scroll over here to drive assist. I press drive assist and I can, I can see the settings there for the, uh, the active collision avoidance and the adaptive cruise. I hit back. Okay, so here we have trip. I press the little touch pad. Uh, I see 88 miles, that's my odometer. I also can scroll down and you see the little red dot with the gray dots beside it there tells me my current consumption. At this point, it says 0.2 gallons per hour, but we're just sitting, sitting here idling. And it says my current range is 318 miles. I uh, scroll down again, and actually I think I hit two. Yep, uh, bonus, zero miles from start. And, and that's just from coasting and, and deceleration, and that kind of thing. Um, here from start, I can tell it's been uh, 28 minutes and I've gone zero miles. Go down again, I've got 88 miles and, and a total run time of 15 hours and three, four minutes. It's just now changed to four. Go down one more time and it tells me I'm doing zero miles per hour. So I hit escape, I go back to trip, I can scroll over to navigation. I can uh, look at west, it, that's my compass. I come down, I hit previous destinations. Uh, there are none in there. I hit global favorites, there's no entries there as well. We're gonna look at more of that on the actual main Mercedes-Benz user experience screen as well. So hit back again, go over here to radio. I can control the radio here. I can change stations, all that kind of thing. I'm gonna go back again. Now I'm gonna scroll over here and it's gonna to go to media, which is where I can hook up a phone, that kind of thing for music. There's no device connected, we know that, so we'll go back. Over here to phone, I can set it up for Bluetooth. Again, there's none connected. Uh, and here I have settings. So <clears throat> I can change vehicle settings, rain sensor, uh, standard low sensitivity. Uh, that's it there. I can go to display and operation. And I can make that DEF show uh, uh, instead of reserve fuel if I would like to. 
Now, let's look at uh, this screen or this uh, panel right here. I also have my adaptive cruise settings. So I can set it, I can resume, I can cancel, and here I can actually chat, uh, set the, the distances that it wants me to follow if it's gonna slow down. Uh, adaptive cruise is awesome. You can have it set on 70 miles an hour and you get in traffic, it slows down to 60, it slows you down, maintains whatever distance you choose to set. Now, let's go over to this side and we're gonna talk about the Mercedes-Benz user experience screen in the middle of the dash. So we'll point at the dash while I do some of the same things here. I've still got the home button, I've still got the little trackpad, the return, and then I got some phone controls we'll talk about as well. But if we look at the screen over here now, the big screen here in the middle, and I hit home, uh, I'm back to the main screen. And we've got a lot of the things we saw on the instrument cluster, but a little more. Here I hit the touchpad, <clears throat> I can go into phone, I can connect a device, I can choose the uh, number pad and that kind of thing once I'm connected, that kind of thing, and I can uh, set up some things there. I'll go back a screen, I go over to navigation, I've got a lot more options here, where to, uh, I can mute the navigation, I can change my route choices and there's settings there. Uh, you do, do you want to avoid uh, highways, that kind of stuff. Uh, go back. Go over here to AM, FM radio. <clears throat> I can choose the stations. Let's see, let's go this way. There we go. I can change the volume here. I can go out of that. I can go over here to media. No device connected, but I've got the ability to connect. I've got the ability to look at playlists and, and go clear over here to settings for uh, equalizer, balance, volume, all that kind of thing. And we'll back out of that, go over here to info. All kinds of goodies here. So right now it's set on fuel consumption. Uh, I actually, if I want to start at the beginning, we'll come over here to engine. <laughs> and now I'm seeing, uh, excuse me, I'm seeing performance, I'm seeing battery voltage, I'm seeing uh, uh, torque, all kinds of good things here. I can uh, actually scroll over now to consumption and I can see fuel consumption and what's going on there. I can scroll over and get my owner's manual here. By the way, I can check this is set, this fuel consumption is set to the last 30 minutes. I can go down here and I can change it to seven and a half, 30, 90, three hours, whatever I want. So that's really neat. By the way, the Mercedes-Benz user experience has a lot of fee, uh, functions and, and she just heard me say Mercedes, so she's wanting to know how I can help how she can help, and I've got that turned down at the moment, it's the reason we don't hear her. But I go over here to Mercedes Pro Apps. I can set up my smartphone to connect with it. Uh, it'll use uh, this screen and it'll use the 4G LTE I could set up with Mercedes to use that as a Wi-Fi. Uh, no thank you Mercedes. We'll just get out of that and go back here, I can do the browser. Now I don't think I've got a good enough signal right here to get a browser where I'm sitting. Um, but a lot of capabilities there. And get over here to vehicle settings. <laughs> a lot of choices here. Um, electronic stabili uh, stabilization, uh, parking assist. Over here, <clears throat> this has to do with lane keep assist. And I can go in there and I can change lots of settings. The settings turn that on or off, turn that on or off. Parking, I can turn that on or off. Parktronic is off, now it's on. Go up here to assistance. <clears throat> Camera parking, I can adjust, worn early all around, all kinds of things there. Um, traffic sign assist, I, it'll put the tra traffic signs up on the instrument panel screen if I want it to, visual, it'll do audio as well. Active lane keep assist, I can turn it on or off. I can set a warning. Uh, active brake assist, I can do early, medium, or late, or turn it off. And if we go back up to the top and go to vehicle, Acoustic lock, it'll beep when it locks. Automatic door lock, I can turn that on or off. I can do a gas station search in the navigation or I can do standby mode. Lights, <clears throat> exterior lighting delay, I can change the delay. This is pretty common stuff in most, uh, most vehicles today. Uh, interior lighting delay, same thing. And locator lighting, which helps you locate your vehicle with the key fob. Uh, go up here to system. 
and now I can adjust display settings, I can change brightness, I've got display off uh, timing, I've got day-night design, that kind of thing. Go down here to controls and I can do keyboards and handwriting, I can choose English, I can choose uh, other languages, I can do a uh, readout for handwriting recognition. Uh, I've got touch control sensitivity, medium, light, that kind of thing, acoustic operating feedback, and all that kind of stuff. So the Mercedes-Benz user experience is awesome, and I've said it again. So, hey Mercedes. Well, now she doesn't want to help. So maybe I'm supposed to say Mercedes. How may I help you? There you go. So. You got to do it right, but uh, Mercedes is very helpful. And if you don't want help, just hit cancel, uh, or you can say uh, Mercedes cancel and it goes away. So there you have the uh, Mercedes Benz user experience, which is awesome. We also have some tactile buttons down here that do all the same things with a volume control. So we have back to the steering wheel uh, shifter paddles here. Remember, we've got a seven speed transmission that, that George talked about, and you can manually adjust here as well. So the fact of the matter is you can be driving down the highway, you can adjust or do anything you need to do in this vehicle without taking your hands off of the steering wheel except three things. Two of them you shouldn't be doing while you're driving. <laughs> well, one is adjusting your seat. You should already have it adjusted. Uh, two is your headlights. You don't need to mess with the headlights because there's an auto setting. It's down here. Uh, you don't need to mess with that. And the other is to adjust to the climate control, have your, uh, have your co-pilot do that for you. So you can drive for hours, have all this control here, never have to take your hand off the wheel. It's awesome. Uh, I mentioned the power seats, they're great. We'll get a shot of the beautiful seats too because this is the Red Rock with the beautiful red trim. And we also have three memory settings on those seats. So the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, two things yet that Airstream did in this cab. One is this rear view camera. Now, there is no rear view mirror here at all. And the reason is all you would see is what's in the back of the coach uh, inside. This lets us see a full three lanes of traffic behind us. And when I turn on the left turn signal, it switches to the view from the left side. We've got a camera on the left. When I cancel that, it will go back to the rear view. And we're there now. And if I turn on the right, it's gonna do the same thing, except we've got the right door open, so it's gonna point out next to us to a neat little Airstream Sport we have sitting over there. So I cancel and it goes right back to center. So it's a great, uh, a great driving aid. That's all Airstream. Uh, of course, it works well with the lane keep assist and the blind spot assist, uh, the active cruise, or uh, active collision avoidance, adaptive cruise, all the safety features. Uh, that the guy, other guys are going to talk about. The one other thing Airstream did in this cab is we have the Mercedes-Benz user experience, which is a great sound system, a great navigation uh, system, and all of those things. But that is just for the cab. Airstream has put in a separate sound system right here over the cab that is for the coach itself. So this is your sound system for the coach in the back. So you can actually have different music back there if you want but the, the speakers back there are awesome. They've got a great sound system. You got a great sound system when you're up here in the cab. And Mercedes and Airstream, the best of both worlds. Uh, Mercedes has done an awesome job with this chassis and this cab. Uh, Airstream has done an awesome job uh, with the coach. Uh, you got the best of everything. Okay, while we're on the inside here, I'm gonna start a little closer to you guys um, with these racks. You'll notice these, these rack brackets these are all over in here. You get a taste for how they work just by the hardware on these storage compartments. And these storage compartments are a lot different than what you would have found on the regular interstates. Um, these are more open. You want to put some fishing poles in, they're not compartmentalized, which would prevent that. You want to put in some bigger boxes or longer bed setups, um, roll mats, sleeping bags, whatever you want to cram in here, it's got room from one end to the other. It's over. 60 inches of space actually and uh, those racks that hold this up they're here they're under the black strips in the floors you lift those black protective strips up if you want to put a couple mountain bikes in here and secure them to the floor so they're not rolling around you have that option there's two behind me and two in front of me you also have side racks here if you're into cycling big time or mountain biking 
and you need to hang up an area to hang extra tires up, you have those options. Hang fishing poles with these brackets, you have those options. And the bed here is pretty easy too. It's, it's made with a real nice, almost like a boat type durable fabric. Um, that literally you can make it uh, two single beds here or one big bed that actually goes 70 to 82 inches. 70 inches by 82. That gives you room for the big guys to lay in here in comfort. So a lot of neat things with this. It's very durable. It's easy to sweep out and clean. It's got an extremely durable tough floor resistant to scratches, dirt, mud, rocks, that type of thing. So I think you'll find it great. Counter space. If you're in here prepping for a dinner on the grill outside, but you don't want to set a big table up outside, it's getting late, you want to do it in the comfort of the air conditioning, you got a 22 inch, almost 22 inch square counter space here. Gives you a lot of space. So your options really are endless of the different ways you can use this unit. It's just got a great open cargo area and comforts almost like the other ones that, you know, um, with this tough fabric, you don't have to worry about your your leather and your fancy seat and go out in the outdoors, enjoy it. That's what this is built for, especially with the four wheel drive and the Goodyear tires. Uh, the exterior width is 79 and a half inches. The, the mirrors are 95 inches at the edge. The exterior height with the AC is 121 inches. Its base weight is 9,000. 545 pounds. There's a, it has an 11,030 GVWR. The fuel tank is 24.5 gallons, which is 176.4 pounds of weight. You really will get 18 to 24 miles per gallon. I've seen it, I've experienced it. Uh, this engine is bulletproof and uh, the, the mileage is incredible. It's better than a lot of cars. There is also a 100 watt solar system that's just for the chassis battery. There's an additional 300, but I'm not talking about that, uh, but there's a 100 just for the chassis. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed putting the video together, a lot of information. And if you're interested in, in receiving more information, you may contact the Airstream sales professionals at Airstream of South Florida. Thank you and have a wonderful day.